Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at examples of solving compound inequalities, their solutions, and their graphs. Before we get started, let's just talk about what a compound inequality is. A compound inequality is, well, the combination of two linear inequalities. So what we're talking about here is we're talking about two linear inequalities, linear inequalities, but combined into one, uh, one example. Um, we can see two different types of compound inequalities. So one type we can see would be a conjunction or an and. And when we see an and, that means that it has to meet two criteria. So it might say x is greater than a and x is less than b. And then it has to meet both those criteria. One place we might see that is like, you know, uh, if you're at a restaurant, there's a menu for kids and there's a menu for seniors and everyone else in between. So it would be people who are older than 12 and younger than 65. That's where we would see an and. So when we see an and type of inequality, we're talking about it being bound by real numbers. So we have a lower bound that's a real number and an upper bound that's a real number. Those endpoints may or may not be included and we know that based on, well, if it, you know, if we have this, then it's not included. If we have this, it is included. One other thing about our and compound inequality is that uh, you can write it two different ways. So we can say, okay, well, in one case, X has to be greater than A, and in another case, X has to be less than B. But because it, we're talking about an interval of numbers, when we do an and or a conjunction compound inequality, we can actually combine into one massive compound inequality. Right here, we have two. We could take this, X is greater than A and X is less than B, and combine it into one big compound inequality, which would say A, is less than x is less than b. Now this only works for and, and the assumption here is that a is also smaller than b. The transitive property needs to work, so that's why we're allowed to do that. And this of course works if we, we have the or equal to as well. Now when we're talking about this type of inequality where we have three, which is called a compound inequality in and of itself, if you do something to get x by itself, you do it to all three quote unquote sides. So if X, it said x minus 2 in the middle, you would add 2 to a. On the left, you would add 2 in the middle to x, and you would add b to uh, add 2 to b on the right. So what you do, you have to do to all three sides. The other type of compound inequality is a disjunction, which we use the word or with. So this would say that x is less than a, or x is greater than b. And with the or, there is no single compound inequality. We cannot say, well, we can just write it like this, right? Greater than and greater than. No, because then what we're saying is that B is less than A, which the assumption is that it's not. So with the or, you will always see two separate inequalities, solve each one separately, and then you'll have your solution sets from there. Ands, like I said, there'll always be one single interval. Ors should be two separate intervals. So you have one going off to the left and one going off to the right and they should have no overlap at all. So that would be like the rest of the people that it, in my previous example, if you're less than 12 or if you're over 65 or 65 and over, that would be an, a disjunction. You fit into either the one category of being younger than 12 or you're older than 65, but you can't be both. So that's compound inequalities. Let's look at a bunch of examples. We want to solve the compound inequality, we're going to graph it, and we're going to write the solution set in interval notation. For our first example, which kind does this have to be? Is this a conjunction or a disjunction? This has to be a conjunction. And so, again, what it did is it took the two separate inequalities and combined it into one. And the two separate inequalities, if you want to separate them, you can. We would have negative 2 is less than or equal to m minus 5. And, and we would use that word and, very important, m minus 5, what's in the middle, is less than or equal to 2. So if you want to split it apart, you can. Um, if, you know, some people would like to turn this around, so be m minus 5 is greater than or equal to negative 2, and m minus 5 is less than or equal to 2. Now, I don't suggest doing this, but I just so you can see that these will produce the same answers, and we like that one single inequality because, you know, that's just less things to do. Now we have two separate inequalities to solve, whereas before we only had one. But in any case, what we would do is we would add 5 to both sides here, and we'd have m is greater than or equal to 3. Over here, we would add 5 to both sides, and we have m is less than or equal to 7. And again, this is one giant and. 
or if you solve this one, you would be adding five to all three, to the left, the middle, and the right, giving us three is less than or equal to m, which is less than or equal to seven. And you can see we have that exact same thing between those two. Also keep in mind, sometimes I have students say, but it says greater than and greater than, shouldn't one of those be less than? Oh, sorry, this says less than and less than. Shouldn't one of those be greater than? And it would be, right, if you put the m on the proper side of that three is less than or equal to m, then it would be m is greater than or equal to three. Okay, so this is the solution. Then we wanna graph our solution set, or this is also our solution, either one. So I need three, five, six, seven, eight, and over three is a closed circle because of the or equal to right here. And over seven is a closed circle. This is a conjunction, they go towards each other or we're talking about the range of numbers between three and seven. So that's what the graph would look like. Some textbooks choose to not use closed circles for some weird reason and what they use instead is they use a bracket. So they would put a bracket here and they would put a bracket here and then they would connect in the middle. Uh, I like using the circles because this is a graph and we use points to represent places on the graph, but whatever, textbooks have to do their own thing. Textbooks kind of just relate the graph to interval notation. So the last thing we need to write in interval notation, this would be a bracket and it would be three comma seven. So this is saying all the numbers between three and seven, including three and seven. Okay, in another example, we have negative 60, is less than 50a minus 40 is less than 60. And at this point, you should pause the video and see if you can do this one on your own. Of course, I say that and this one's a little bit more work, isn't it? So I'm just gonna rewrite it. We have negative 60 is less than 50a minus 40. The first thing, is this a conjunction or a disjunction? This is a conjunction. It has to be that one single inequality. Make sure our endpoints make sense. Negative 60 is less than 60, perfect. Let's get A by itself in between the two inequality symbols. So first, I something being multiplied to A and something being subtracted. When we go to solve things, we do the opposite of order of operations. So I'm gonna add 40. I add it three times to the left, the middle, and the right. This gives me negative 20 is less than 50A is less than 100. Get A by itself by dividing everything by 50. And what does that give us? That would be, we can divide by 10, we get negative 2 fifths is less than A is less than 2. Still makes sense, negative 2 fifths is less than 2, perfect. Okay, so on our number line, I need negative 1 and 0, because negative 2 fifths is in between them. And then I only need to go up to 2, although I'll put a 3 as a bonus. Negative 2 fifths is in between negative 1 and 0, a little itty bitty bit closer to 0. This is an open circle, an open circle over two, and we want everything in between those numbers. Uh, when we set up our interval, we're gonna use parentheses to represent that we're not including the endpoint, so it's gonna be negative two-fifths comma two. Now, sometimes I have students say, wait, so negative two-fifths isn't included, why don't we just start at zero? But remember, there's all those numbers in between zero and negative two-fifths. We sometimes forget about them, uh, especially since this one did end up having a fraction as an endpoint, it's a little bit easier to interpret, but sometimes I have students say, well, can't we just, you know, end it at one instead of two? But no, because there's a whole infinitely many numbers between one and two. So this would be our solution. We just use the parenthesis to say, don't include the endpoints, but include everything between them. Okay, our last example of a conjunction. And if you want to, you can still use properties of inequalities. If you want to clear out the decimals, you can. Um, to clear them out, everything has a tenths place, so I might multiply every single term. There are four terms here. I'm going to multiply by 10. Here's term 1, term 2, term 3, and term 4. That would give me 5 is less than 3a minus 7 is less than 11. All right, I want to get a by itself in the middle. So what we're looking at is getting a by itself, and here's what I have with it. I have 3 being multiplied to it and 7 being subtracted from it. I'm going to start with the 7. I'm going to add 7 in the middle add it to the left, add it to the right. Then I get five plus seven is 12, is less than three A, is less than 18. Now to get A by itself, I need to divide by three, divide by three, divide by three, and I get four is less than A, is less than six. All right, so on my number line, this is gonna be really close together, so I'm just gonna put a few more numbers for fun. We have open circle over four, open circle over six, we connect in between. 
So all the numbers between four and six. And I forgot to mention on the last slide because this is a, a different one, this is open circle. Some textbooks use a parenthesis here. So they would use parentheses and then they would connect the parentheses. In interval notation, we would use parentheses to say we're not including the endpoints, and we would say four comma six. All right, for our final two examples, we are gonna look at some disjunctions. You'll notice that I have to write them separate. I cannot write them together. We have two separate because the two, two solutions sets are not overlapping at all, or at least they shouldn't be unless there's a special case. So we have x plus 5 is less than or equal to negative 2. I'm going to solve this one first by subtracting 5 from both sides. I get x is less than or equal to negative 7. Or what's going on over here, we have x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 2. Subtract 5 from both sides. We get x is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay, so how we graph this on a number line is you're just going to graph the two separate pieces, uh, they shouldn't overlap at all. So we have negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. Over negative 7, we have a closed circle or a bracket, depending on what you're using here, with an arrow going to the left, right? X is smaller than negative 7. Over negative 3, we also have a closed circle or a bracket, and we have our solutions going to the right because X is larger than negative 3. For the interval notation, we also write them separately, and we usually put the smaller one first, the one that with the less than. So x is less than or equal to negative 7. That would go down to negative infinity, and then it stops at negative 7, and we include negative 7. Then we go into a little bit of set theory here. We use this sign, which just means or. That's just what it translates to. Or, and then we have what? Negative 3 to infinity. So this would be our interval notation, this would be our graph, and this would be our initial solution. Okay, in our final example, let's see what we have. First, we know we have a disjunction because I see the word or, so we're looking for two separate intervals of numbers. The first interval of numbers is going to come here from negative 6x plus 3 is less than negative 3. Let's get x by itself first by subtracting 3 from both sides. Then we get negative 6x is less than negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. Divide both sides by negative 6. Little bell should be going off at this point because we just divided both sides by a negative. Anytime we divide both sides of an inequality by a negative, that flips the inequality symbol around. So this would become x is greater than, and then any number divided by itself is 1. Okay, so there's one set of numbers, or our other set of numbers is negative 6x plus 3 is greater than 3. Uh, we want to get x by itself, so first I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. That's negative 6x is greater than 0. Okay, to get x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6. And I just divided both sides by a negative. What does that do? That flips the inequality, so it becomes less than. And then 0 divided by anything except for 0 is 0. So here we have it. Oops, wait a minute. Now they're backwards, right? Now I have x is greater than 1 on the left and x is less than 0 on the right. I can flip those around. So I can say x is less than 0. Can't flip that part x is less than 0, or x is greater than 1. That would be one part. Next, if we were to graph this, we would have negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. This would be an open circle or a parenthesis over uh, 0 with the arrow going to the left. We're looking for the numbers that are smaller than 0. An open circle or a parenthesis on the right. And notice that my parentheses kind of look backwards, right? Because the parentheses should open in the direction that the arrow is going. So if I put the parentheses over 0 like this, this is improper. We wouldn't do that. So just be really careful about that. And then in interval notation, we're going to start with the x is less than 0. Numbers that are less than 0 extend to negative infinity. And then 0, we don't include 0, so we use that parentheses. Right? This parentheses right here should match the parentheses on, over 0 on the graph if that's what you are using um, to represent the endpoints. Or, and then we have x is greater than 1, so we start at 1 with a parenthesis up to infinity, and just same with that, the parenthesis should be open, uh, opening up towards the right over 1 as well. These have been examples of solving compound inequalities. Thank you for stopping by.